Okay, so today we are going to do the uh, a video on how to do your calibrations for the Hubson Zeno Mini Pro. And I will take my screen recording and pop that up here on the screen for you to see so you can see what I'm pressing on the device and the app and then we'll show you the process with the quad. Now they have an awful lot of calibrations here. The one we are not going to do is a compass calibration. You do that out on the field before you fly and for any of those who ask you don't need to do it every time. For any calibration it's just as easy to mess it up as it is to do it right. So the more times you do it the more chances you have at having a bad calibration. Once you do a compass calibration, you should be able to go for a long time without having to worry about that unless you really change into a drastic situation of you know, flying to another country or crazy elevations or things like that or uh, you know, you've had a crash or something. But um, generally, you don't have to do compass calibrations hardly at all. After a firmware update, I always do all my calibrations. So that's what we've done. We've done a firmware update on the squad. Now we're going to do our calibrations. Normally you would have this on here because the bottom gets hot, but as you're gonna see in all my videos, I'm going to take a temperature check on the bottom as we do these type of things. So when you do a firmware update, I'll check the temperature like I did in one video. When we do calibrations, we'll check the temperature and then say if you're transferring files and things like that, we'll take a temperature if I do that video. Now, they have a lot of calibrations here. What order should you do them in? Generally, the IMU calibration and a gimbal calibration are really all you need, but they do a gyro and a horizontal as well. Technically, when you do an IMU calibration, those should be uh, taken care of pretty much within that. An IMU calibration takes the internal measurement and resets everything to zero. So if you have it sitting nice and level, it'll reset that to level, to that level to uh, parameters of all zeros. If you have it on a crooked surface, it's going to set that at zero as well. And then it's going to fly very poorly when you have it actually in a real level situation. So you want to make sure you put it on a level, flat surface. You want to be away from any met, uh, metal objects like magnetic interference, speakers, things like that. So I, I have all those things around me, and it's not the ideal situation. Um, so an IMU calibration to me is the most important one. I'm going to save that uh, after I do a horizontal. So the first thing I'm going to do is click horizontal, start calibration. Start the calibration. And that's always a quick calibration. Now I'm going to go to the gyro and I'm going to do that calibration, which should be a very quick one as well. That's complete. So now I'm going to do the IMU. And again, I think the IMU is really all you need to do and then follow that with a gimbal calibration. So let's do that IMU calibration. And then you're gonna to wanna to follow your screen prompts here. So it says lay it flat on the ground. I'm laying it on the table because this is something you should do indoors on a flat surface, not what looks flat outside. Um, and then it says to calibrate according to the diagram and uh, don't don't move it and so forth and then uh, keep the aircraft uh, powered on do not start the mowers motors so let's click start so first thing it's doing i don't want to have any vibration here and it says to do it all with the arms closed so let's close these arms so now it says lay it on its side we're going to lay it on its side i'm doing it exactly like the picture I'm keeping it as straight as I can and still. If it takes a long time, it's usually because you're wiggling and moving around. Now on the back. I am moving and it is taking a little bit of time. 
now upside down and I'm not going to lay it down. I'm keeping it so it's it's pretty level right here actually. And now on the nose and as straight as I can and keep it still. And it says we are finished. So I'm going to set it back down like this. Click finish and we're done with that. Now the last calibration I want to do is I want to go to the gimbal calibration. Click start calibration and then keep your eye here on the gimbal. Make sure we're, we're pretty good in focus there. And calibrate. Not a whole lot happening there. <laughs> and it says complete. So here's where it asks you to reset the quad by turning it off. Now we're going to turn it back on. And the gimbal will calibrate it back to its home position. And then from here, since we've done all those calibrations, we'll do a temper temperature check. And the CPU says 73 Celsius. That's, that's, that's pretty hot, actually. 74, it's climbing. So let's do a check here. I'll show you once I've done it. And the hottest point, I'm just moving around trying to find the hottest point. Yeah, it's getting, it's getting to the point where it could actually burn you. 147, if you can see that. You should be able to see that. I can see it on the screen. 147, and now to touch it, that's not going to burn you, but it's hot. If you kept your finger there for a long time, that could definitely burn you. <laughs> that's hot. This is the hottest spot right here, this side right here. So that, that, that seems to be where I get my highest temperature readings. And yeah, you don't want to keep your finger there. Um, I think a burning point for second degree burns is 140 uh, for a certain period of time. So let's, let's check the back because that sensor feels like it's hot too. Sensors feel like they're really hot, but they're not. about 99 but yeah these back sensors there's a lot of heat coming off the sensors themselves the front's really nice and cool it's just all the heat is in the back I mean even the battery feels like it's warm so again you can touch all this right here there I, I feel just warmth as I run my finger over the sensors and the LED light I can keep my fingers there, it doesn't hurt. But if I take my hands and run along here, it's hot. Like that's, we gotta turn this baby off now. <laughs> Cause it's getting up there. Yeah, we are. We're at a point where it could burn you. Almost 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. So I'm going to turn it off. That's not good for the quad. Now generally you wouldn't have kept it on as long as I did. Um, I kept it on longer as we're sitting here talking and everything. But during the calibrations, it's fair to say it definitely got over 140. And... Um, Technically, that is enough to burn you, so that is why we have this. You want to keep this on your quad when you're doing these things. And um, this is strictly just a protective barrier. Now, I have never put this on before, so bear with me here. Because I probably am doing it wrong. There we go. Get 
Got to line everything up with these little holes on the side and it's hard to do with the legs closed. There we go. So now it's on and you are perfectly safe. Like now it doesn't feel hot at all. So, I mean, that is strictly there um, to protect you. Um, because if they did not provide something like this, this would make them, they, they've got a liability here where you could actually say it burned you and it's not safe. They've provided you with this, so that takes, takes them and protects them from people trying to sue them for getting burned. So it also, it, you know, it, like I said, it protects you, but it also protects surfaces. Depending on what you have it sitting on, uh, it could protect that surface as well. So it doesn't take heat away. It's not a heat shield. I'm going to keep repeating this. It's, it's just a protective barrier. That's all that is. So that is how you do all of your compass calibration. I mean, your uh, calibrations, your IMU calibration, horizontal calibration, gyro calibration, and gimbal calibration. Everything is fully calibrated. Again, do this on a flat level surface away from metal objects, uh, magnets such as speakers and your other electronics. Normally, I don't even do it that close to the controller itself. Um, I like to be a little bit of a distance away from that. I always keep that off to the side and keep the quad on like my dining room table where there's no metal or uh, interference. So that's how you do the calibrations and uh, that's the order that I do them in. So hopefully if that is a concern of yours, when to do them, how to do them, uh, and with a little explanation and showing you also how hot it gets, uh, hopefully this was something you found be helpful. So if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button. And as always, hit that thumbs up on your way out. And we will catch you on the next video. Peace and love.